Hello and welcome back to another video and in this video we will be learning um, how to classify um, the, uh, our data using k nearest neighbors. In our previous video we learned uh, the card algorithm in decision trees and we also learned how to implement that using scikit-learn library in python. Now in this video I will be covering all the theoretical concepts that you need to understand k nearest neighbor and in our next video we will be um, learning how to implement that in python. So now uh, I will be starting, I will be uh, explaining this concept with an example uh, and that example is let's just say we have um, a, two di a two dimensional space in which, we in which we have random points and let's assume this is a scatter plot, right? And what we can say is that each of these points belong to either of the class A or class B, right? So let's just say the positive one was belonging to class A and the negative one belong was belonging to class B, right? And then let's say I introduce a new point. This new point I have denoted with a question mark is the point that we need to classify. Our goal is to classify this new point, you know, whether it belongs to class A or class B. So how do we do that? Let's assume that since it's a two-dimensional space, we can easily say that this new point uh, might be having this, um, uh, you know, this this random coordinate. So this one has x1 and y1. So so I have denoted this as with x and y, x1 and y1, which is respectively for x-axis and y-axis, right? And let's just say that uh, let's just assume that all the other points in our data space um, also had the uh, also had some coordinates, right? So I, I'm representing with them, them with these numbers. Now this 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 points these uh, this numbers don't ha have nothing to do with the, the with the diagram right here. I've just um, written them them just for the sake of example, right? Now the idea behind k nearest neighbor is that we, what we can be essentially do is we can just go ahead and calculate distances between uh, our new point and each of the other corresponding points in the data space, and. What's, what what the algorithm uh, basically does is basically calculates the distances between each and every point and the one point that is nearest to our new our point will automatically be concluded as the nearest neighbor of that data point that's the basic idea that's it but how do we do that let's just say we wanted to calculate the distance for each of the points right so we can just go ahead and use the Manhattan distance now in general we can use uh, Manhattan distance, uh, which is the most commonly used um, formula when we are basically doing k nearest neighbors, but you can definitely go ahead and use other distance formulas such as Euclidean distance. But I am just uh, using Manhattan distance here. So let's just say I've calculated uh, the first one for you and I've shown it how it's basically done, how, how it's basically being done. And what I've done is I've actually subtracted x1 from x2 and then y1 from y2 and I've taken mods of both of them and then I've added them together and the final answer is 31. And similarly we have the answer for all of the data points in our data space, right? And by looking at this, you can kind of easily tell that this one right here has the minimum distance. So this one might be the nearest neighbor. but what was our original goal? Our original goal was not to just find the distance between this point. Our original goal was to classify. Now, which class does this point belong to? And let's just assume that um, the, the existing data points that we have in this two-dimensional space had uh, random classes A, B, A, B, and I have just mentioned them right here. And what we can basically do is we can just go ahead and use the original answer from our previous table. And we can easily say that, well, since this is the nearest neighbor, from this point and since this point belongs to class B this point also belongs to class B that's exactly what we basically do in care nearest neighbors but here's here's the problem what does this K in nearest neighbor mean and how how do we know that we only need to uh, we only need to check only one point and we don't need to check other points now this is exactly where the concept of K in the K nearest neighbor comes in so let's assume that initially our the, the value of K was 1 so what we can do is we can use the same answer from our previous table and we can say that uh, well this is the nearest neighbor but what if k was equal to 4 now here is where the confusion starts so what we will basically do is we will just go ahead and, and rank them based on the distances and by doing that I can, I can easily say that well this one right here has the minimum distance so this has the f uh, this is the first nearest neighbor and this one can be the second nearest neighbor and let's just say this one is the third nearest neighbor and finally this one is the fourth nearest neighbor but here is the problem they all have separate classes they all have different classes now how do we def how do we decide between uh, these classes right what we can do and this is where exactly the concept of voting comes in what we can do is we can just go ahead and count the number of occurrences for each of the class and 
what I mean by that is we can just go ahead and say that let's just say right here you can see that the B occurs three times in our in our um, results and A occurs only one time and since B is greater than A num the number of occurrences of B is greater than the number of occurrences of A we can easily conclude that our new data point belongs to class B and in our um, two-dimensional space we can say that this point belonged to the class B or simply the negative sign now this is basically the whole idea or the general idea behind the k-nearest neighbors and I've actually made it really simple for you guys obviously this is not where the k-nearest neighbor ends there's much more to this than what I've explained but this is the general idea and I hope you actually um, actually got I, I, I hope you actually got this concept clear and since we have actually explained this concept so we can now move on to the implementation part of this which I will be covering in the next video so till then thanks a lot for watching my video and Hope you have subscribed and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much.